The harness is where the pilot sits. The first noticeable element of the harness is the compartment sticking out on the side. Known as the container, this is where the reserve parachute is located. The reserve parachute's deployment handle, here in red, is located at the top of this pocket. The parachute straps leading out of the container are anchored to the harness near the shoulders using carabiners. On the back of the harness is a storage compartment. This compartment is usually used to store your paragliding sack during the flight. Also located on the back and bottom of the harness is the bag protection. There are two main types, airbag protection or, as shown here, foam bag protection. The pilot sits on this seat board inserted in the harness which makes it comfortable and allows the pilot to transfer his weight to control the wing. Let's look at how the pilot is attached to the harness. The harness is attached to the pilot in three important places, all three of which must be verified before every flight during the pre-flight inspection. First the leg straps which are easily fastened thanks to a quick lock buckle. Being able to slide your hand through is a good indication of how tight it should be. These straps need to be appropriately fastened so that the pilot is comfortable during his takeoff run. A little higher is the chest strap which often has a threefold locking mechanism. In the center is the safety strap which is there to remind you by its color and position to buckle up. Some older type harnesses do not have this, instead there is a single buckle. Adjusting the chest strap is simple and by loosening it, the pilot's weight can be more easily shifted during the flight, making more maneuvers possible. However, when flying through turbulent air, the pilot may find having a chest strap too loose or too tight, it also affects the safety above of the glider. The shoulder straps need to be adjusted so that the bottom of the harness is level with the middle of the pilot's thighs. If the straps are too loose, the pilot may encounter difficulties during the takeoff run as well as during the transition into a seated position. By tightening these straps, the pilot makes sure that the harness is adjusted to his size. A comfortably fitting harness is an added safety precaution. It makes flying easier and prevents the pilot from being uncomfortable during his flight. The objective here is not to teach you how to fold your reserve parachute nor how to use it, which may be done at some point during ground school. Rather, the goal is to raise your awareness about the issue and to help you visualize a parachute that is rarely seen during the training. It's a piece of fabric in the shape of a hemisphere with a hole in the center. It's important to understand that the reserve parachute is your last resort in case of an emergency. For that reason, it's crucial that it functions properly. That's why you should ask experienced instructors to help you fold and pack your parachute. Learning how to do this yourself during ground school is also recommended. The folded parachute is placed in the deployment bag. Once packed in the pod, it is then placed in the compartment on side of the harness called the container. As far as maintenance is concerned, your parachute should be aired out regularly. Unfolding, inflating and refolding it twice a year is recommended. You've probably been wondering what makes these pieces of fabric fly, why all of the gliders typically have the same shape, or even how this flexible structure manages to stay aloft above the pilot's head. Our focus on flight mechanics in this chapter will attempt to provide answers to all of these questions. 
At the very least, it will give you the basic understanding you'll need to pilot this peculiar aircraft. Let's start by looking at the basic shape of our paragliders. In this animation, we'll demonstrate the importance of the wing's profile. The goal is to optimize its penetration through the air and reduce drag as much as possible. We're going to see what happens to the air as it flows over these three profiles. Looking at the first profile, a simple plate, the molecules of air contained in the airstream are completely blocked in the middle. The air that flows beyond the plate is turbulent, which significantly increases drag. The airflow over this profile is similar to what happens when rowing a boat. The oar needs enough force to displace water, and as it displaces the water, small eddies form behind it. The second profile penetrates the air a lot better, as we can see here. The result is a much smoother airflow. The molecules of air flow smoothly over the front of the profile. However, too much drag is still created by this profile. The third profile has been improved so that the airflow is smooth from start to finish. Our profile will travel through the air with little resistance thanks to its cambered shape. It will also reduce drag by replacing the air in its wake. This is an ideal aerodynamic profile. If you were to cut the paraglide in half, you'll find this cambered shape along the entire wingspan from the leading to the trailing edge. This is how manufacturers optimize the wing's penetration and movement through the air. But this doesn't explain what makes a paraglider fly. Let's move on to a phenomenon that you've probably already heard of, lift. Let's take another simplified cross-section of our wing and observe what happens as air flows over its profile. In flight, the angle created by the paraglider's wing and the relative wind is called the angle of attack. As the molecules of air come into contact with the wing, they are separated into two streams by the leading edge. The first stream flows along the upper surface of the wing, the other along its lower surface. Even though the upper surface is longer than the lower surface, Experiments have shown that both air streams reach the trailing edge at the same time. There's only one way for the molecules taking the longer route along the upper surface to arrive at the same time. They have to accelerate. Thanks to a principle formulated by Swiss mathematician and physician Bernoulli in 1738, we know that as the speed of a fluid increases, its pressure decreases. In other words, the faster moving air over the upper surface of the profile creates a low pressure zone on top of the wing, which is the source of lift. On the other side of the wing, air molecules push against the lower surface, creating a high pressure zone. This is also a source of lift. About three-quarters of the lift results from the low pressure above the wing and one-quarter from the high pressure under it. Most of the lift occurs near the profile's leading edge. This simplified explanation of what causes lift should help you understand why our wings fly. Lift is thus created by the flow of air over the profile. But how is this phenomenon sustained when there isn't any wind? What is the paraglider's motor? In order to answer these questions, we'll